In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate the generation of Word documents by extracting data from an Excel file and putting this data into a Word document. In this project, we're going to create a document for each row that we have here on the table on the left. And for this simple example, we'll generate 10 cover letters using a library called docxtpl and of course Python. So let's get started. Okay, to start with this tutorial, we have to install a library called docxtpl. This library is going to help us generate multiple Word documents using Python. So we open up the terminal and then we write the following pip install and then we write docxtpl. Then we press enter and with this we install this library. Then what we have to do is import the library. And to do this, to do it very fast, we have to go to the documentation and copy this code snippet. I'm going to copy this one and now I'm going to explain you what this code means. So first we import a docx template from the library that we just installed, which is docx TPL. And after that, we have to uh, read the template that we have. In this case, I have a template here on the right that I showed you before. This is a template I downloaded and we're going to use this template. You can use your own template, but you can also download this template in the description. Then what we have to do first is change the, the name of this template. So I'm going to uh, change and here is just name as template.docx. So first we read the template and then we have to indicate which elements we want to replace. So to do this, we have to go to our template and each element we want to replace, we have to delete it and then open double curly braces with a variable. For example, here, I don't want this number to be here. So I want to insert a variable. So I write double curly braces and then what we have to do is write the name of the variable. So for example here, company name, just as an example. I pasted company name and this is what we're going to replace. In this case, instead of company name, we write the name of this company, which is world company. So that's what we will replace. And I'm not going to bore you doing this one by one. But what I'm going to do is open another template I have here, but with those changes that I've done. So I'm going to open this one called template hyphen my hyphen info. And basically what I did here is what I was showing you before. So in this data that we're going to introduce first, I put the variables my phone and then, for example, my email and then my address. So I'm going to zoom here so you can see much better. My phone is this one. My email is this one and my address is this one. So basically I'm just adding the variables that are going to be here on the left as keys in my dictionary. And I did it one by one. So you can do it on your own or you can also use my template. So I change also the date here and then I put my name at the end. So here is with this uh, name that was by default, but I put here as a variable. So let's change this on the left. But before I do that here, uh, after we do that, we have to render and then to save this in, a, in another file. So now let's change the content inside this, uh, this dictionary. First, we have to create some variables and I'm going to create one variable for each element that I have here in color braces. So my phone, my email, my address and so on. So I'm going to copy, copy one by one and you can do the same. Now I copied each element one by one and I created one variable for each of them. You don't have to name it as the name here on the right. This name and this variable name can be different, but well, I just copied and pasted here. Now we have to put our own information. For example, in my name, I'm going to put my own name, Frank Andrade, and then we can fill all this information. I've just completed all this information and now in the part where we have to put the date, we're going to use a library called Daytime. Actually, it's the Daytime module and we have to write from Daytime import Daytime. And now we have to use a method called today to get today's date. So I write today and then with this we got the current day. And then to transform this 
time data into a string, we have to use a method called strftime. And this one has a particular syntax that we have to follow. So, for example, if I want to extract that day, I have to write percentage d. And with this, we have we extract the day. Then for the month, we have to write percentage b. And for the year, we write percentage y. And here, as you can see, I added this comma just to give a format to this date. And you're going to see it later. So once we have this, we have to introduce each variable to our dictionary. So here I'm going to delete this because I'm not going to use it. OK, I finished the dictionary. And as you can see here on the left is the name of the key. And this name of the key has to be exactly the same as the name that we see here inside curly braces. So for example, my phone inside curly braces should be the same as this one, my phone. This cannot be different. But the value here on the right, this one can be different. So this is a variable I created. And well, this one represents my name. This one can be different. We're not going to get any issue if we name it differently. So just make sure that the name of the key is exactly the same as this one here on each value that is inside curly braces. So with that being said, I'm going to run this and see the results. So now I right click and run this. And now I'm going to close uh, one of them. So I'm going to close this one put this on the left and I'm going to open the document generated with Python. So now I put this on the right and here I didn't get the results I wanted because here on the left, um, here I didn't put that template I was going to use. So this template that is named template hyphen my hyphen info is not here. So I'm going to put it here template hyphen my hyphen info. So now before I run this, I'm going to close this one that I created by mistake. And now I'm going to run and see the results. So I run this one. Everything is correct. And now I'm going to open this one. And now it should have my name. Yes. Now it has my my fake email, my fake phone number and my fake address. So now we have also the date. That's today's date. And also here I have the name, actually the number and the email. And at the end is my name. So these uh, parts were replaced by our variables. And that's what we wanted. Great. With this, we learned how to replace data in a Word file. OK, so far we put our data into this Word document. But now what if we want to introduce fake data into this uh, cover letter? So for example, we want to generate like 10 cover letters to send to 10 different companies. So each company is going to have a different hiring manager, a different address, a different phone number, a different email and so on. So if we want to introduce data that is going to change, now we have to do something different. First, we have to extract data from an Excel file, for example, here on the left. I have an Excel file that has fake data. So for example, we have 10 rows and we can introduce this data into Word. First, we have to extract the data in each row and then we have to put it into this cover letter. So let's imagine that each row belongs to a different company. So this is like the different hiring manager. So it has a different email address and well, the job position is different and the company is different. So this is perfect. With this simple table, we can have a good idea on how to deal with this. So now let's do this. So first, what we have to do is read this Excel file. So to read this Excel file, we're going to use a library called pandas. So first I write import pandas as PD. And now if you don't have this library, you only have to open up the terminal and then write pip install pandas. So once you have this library installed, we have to read this uh, Excel file. And to do that, 
we write pd dot read underscore csv and then you have to write the name of this library in this case actually the name of this file fake underscore data so this is the name of my csv file and now i write df equal to and this df represents that data frame so this data frame is basically the table that i have here so all the 11 or 10 rows that they have here. So now what we have to do is read each row of this table or data frame. And to do that, I'm gonna use a method called either rows. So I write df dot either rows. And this method allows me to iterate through each row of the table. And to do that, I have to uh, create a for loop. So I write, for index uh, comma row in this. And with this, we iterate through each row. And to give you an example, I'm gonna print the index and then I'm gonna print each row. So now I'm gonna comment this out so I don't have this uh, document generated. And now I'm gonna run this and see what's gonna happen. So here I scroll up and we see that the first element is zero. So in Python, the index starts with zero and this represents the first element. And then we have row, which is the row that we have here. So for example, Mary Sherman is here. This is our first row. Then we have her email, then address, job, and so on. Then the second row is represented by index one. In this case is John Bell. And you can see here that it matches with this uh, data. So we can see that we have all the rows. And now what we have to do is to put each element of the row into our dictionary. So now I'm gonna delete this. And now I'm gonna create a dictionary named context. And just to make it different from the other I have here, I'm gonna name the other as my underscore context. So we avoid repetition in the name of the dictionaries. So now that we have different names, I'm gonna create a key for each element that I have here. Actually, this is not the template I'm gonna use. The one I'm gonna use is here, is another file that I created. So, is this one manager hyphen info and I'm gonna put it here. So as you can see, I added some elements. So before we had this and now we have this. So instead of uh, this uh, data that was by default, I put it this data or this variable inside these curly braces. So we can only copy and paste it. So for example, I'm gonna copy this one and put it inside the keys. And then we have only to duplicate and introduce the others. So I'm gonna copy and paste it one by one. All right, I finished with each key of this dictionary and now I only have to introduce each element of the data frame I had before. So to do that, I have to use the row here so I write row and then I open these square brackets. And then inside the square brackets, I'm gonna write the name of each column. For example, in this one, I'm gonna write the column name, which is the first one. So I copy the name of the column and now I pasted it. And I'm gonna follow the same idea for the remaining elements that I have here. Okay, now I completed each value of this dictionary. For example, here in address, I just put row and inside the square brackets address because here is the name and for example for company i put it here company and here the name of the key is company underscore name well the column in this table has a different name and that's perfectly fine so now that we completed this dictionary we have to combine this dictionary uh, that we just created with the first dictionary that we had here with our personal data so now let's put them together. So now I, I have to use the update method. So I use, first I write context, then update, and we have to write the name of our first dictionary. And what this method does is add this second dictionary to 
this context dictionary. So all the values that are into this my underscore context dictionary is going to be into the context dictionary. That's how it works. And to finish this, I'm going to uncomment this code that we have before and I'm going to put it inside this for loop. And with this, we're going to generate a Word document for each element that we have in this table. So we have 10 rows and we're going to generate a uh, 10 Word documents. And here to generate Word documents with different names, I'm going to use the F string. And here I'm going to use this index just to have something like generated underscore doc underscore zero and then one and then until 10 or actually nine because there are 10 elements. So we're going to generate 10 Word documents and let's do this. So I'm going to right click and run this script. So now everything was successful and now I go to the right and now I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to close both of them and we should have 10 elements generated. So I have here from zero to nine and well, yeah, we have 10 elements. So now I'm going to open any of them and let's see the results. So here I have uh, one and here I didn't get the results I expected because we're not using the template I was planning to use, which was this one I showed you before with all these variables inside these uh, curly braces. So I'm going to copy and paste the name of this template, which by the way, you can find also in the description of this video. So I'm going to paste this template, which is named template hyphen manager hyphen info, because in this one, we're going to put also the info of the manager, which is generated here. So with that said, I'm going to delete these nine documents generated by mistake. And now I'm going to close this one and run this script again. So now we should have these uh, 10 documents. I'm going to open one of them. And now we see all the data that was introduced correctly. First, my personal data, then the fake data. For example, this is a fake job position, a speech and language therapist. Then we have the fake data about the hiring manager. We have the name, we have the address, the phone number, and also the email. And well, all of this text that includes the job position, the name of the company, and also more information. Well, this doesn't change and the rest changes. So now I'm going to open another one to see uh, if it was correctly generated. And yeah, we see that we have another job position, administrator, civil service. And now let's read this. So for example, here it says, I'm thrilled to be writing to you to apply for this position that this company is advertising on LinkedIn. Then this text doesn't change. And well, please feel free to reach out to me at this fake phone number and this fake email and hear my name. So this is how you generate multiple cover letters that you can send to multiple companies. And that's it for this video. In this video, we learn how to generate multiple Word documents using Python.